Yo, what's good everybody? You got Sketch here and welcome back to the channel. On this episode we're looking at a game that on release was the highly anticipated new and final entry to the Cresta series of vertical shoot 'em ups. We're checking out Soul Cresta, developed and published by Platinum Games in conjunction with Hamster for the PC, Switch, and PS4, releasing in February of 2022. This formation based shooter is a unique one in a similar vein to games like Namco's Dangerous Sea, which is another one we'll talk about soon enough. Though in the meantime, let's check out the story up to this point. In space year 101, the Mandler Army invades a solar system conquering several planets in their wake. Humanity globally unites to create the CR-47 craft to take on the threat, unfortunately, to no avail. Humanity would battle the Mandler army from the moon to Planetara, all the end in stalemates each encounter. As humanity's last effort, they develop an upgraded version of the CR-47 craft, codenamed Yamato, as the final battle will commence on the suns of Planet Soul itself. You're the galaxy's last chance of survival, so get ready for an interplanetary fight. Gameplay-wise, you've got a 2.5D vertical shoot -em up that has got more going on than initially meets the eye, as you battle through seven stages venturing across the solar system. Your craft is a combination of three ships that you can rotate on the fly, each with their own unique attack. The red craft fires lasers, blue fires homing missiles, and the yellow fires drill projectiles. You've also got special formations when you have two ships in the event that you lose a craft, and these all provide breathing room when it gets hectic. Formations with all three crafts will work as ultimate team-up attacks inflicting heavy damage on all enemies and able to destroy certain enemy types. Your special formations are all tied to a meter that you can build with each down, and you can stack up to three full meters. Formation icons will be scattered across each level, and the ones you pick up are the ones you'll have available in your arsenal. Getting a hang of how the formations work and how to get into them admittedly took some getting used to, but once you can tap in, you can pull these off even in the most heated battles. Certain leading ships will be able to interact with light colored aspects in each stage like bonus crates, enemies, and gates that will give you additional points, and certain enemies will at times have overshields that you'll need certain crafts to break. You start with a single craft and gain additional crafts when you grab its respective color icon. However, whichever ship is leading when you get hit will go offline until you pick up that color again. Once you lose all your ships, you lose a life. You can build up shield reserves by getting shield icons and coins to keep you moving through the stars, but once you deplete all of your resources, it's game over. Soul Cresta is generous however letting you have immediate respawns right where you're shot down, and you can continue in the spot where you last went down as well if you smoke all your stocks. The game being generous is a good thing since everything in the galaxy wants you dead, and beyond enemies trying to give it the business, the environments are often hostile with tons of hazards across each planet's surface. Asteroid belts and electric barriers won't be the only thing you'll deal with since you'll have to cruise through icy stalactites, fiery lava along with volcanic rock, and healthy dose of lasers that will fry your craft if they make contact. Enemies and bosses get active here, and besides having the fire patterns dialed, being able to bank and hold onto your special meters for bosses is the key to ending those encounters quickly. Bosses start off simple enough, but quickly ramp up in difficulty, especially once you approach the halfway point of the game. When you start seeing the rival craft try murdy encounters, prepare for some frenetic battles since it is a recurring and cunning enemy. Aside from that, bosses will serve up that work, however if you have a grasp of bullet hell shooters, you'll see solutions on how to smoke your opposition and maximize your bonuses. Graphics wise, Soul Crestor runs on the Unity engine and has a unique look with its hard pixel art style. Hideki Kamiya, who's worked on several Capcom titles and was a member of development team Clover, was one of the designers here and it's got a look that's new yet familiar in the shooter. Visually, 90s PC, PS1, and Saturn games come to mind. As you traverse each planet, you'll see varying surroundings with unique traits and hazards. As mentioned earlier, the stages all have their own planetary themes from more organic areas to the reaches of deep space, all which look rad here. From the rip, the action stays at a steady clip until the last battle, and depending on what difficulty you're running, this gets hectic. Even on the lower settings, this will pit you against waves of enemies, and when the lasers come into the chat, you might notice your stocks magically disappear. The only times the action really slows down is when you trigger certain bonuses, or the screen is absolutely swarmed, which feels somewhat intentional when it does happen. Otherwise, the frame rate stays relatively steady. Sprites and environments are vibrant with colorful organic backdrops to the empty vacuums of the solar system, where explosions light up the stratosphere. There's also a decent variety of enemies despite seeing a few types repeat and some bosses being variants of the ones you'd seen earlier in the game. When you think it's the same old thing is when you get surprised by new, more aggressive attacks, and the supernova level explosions of the bigger enemies is a satisfying spectacle to watch. The HUD is a wealth of information, displaying your meters and which attacks your ship has in its arsenal so far. As you gain more skills per stage, you'll see your meters to the right fill, raising your attack levels and providing bonuses once you have all the available attacks unlocked for that stage. The left panel shows your triple meter and which formations you've collected so far. Boss parts will have a few staples that will swap colors and attacks up until the final encounter with the Shadow Mandler, which is hands down the coolest looking boss in the game. This coupled with the escape sequences is an awesome climax to an intense battle. While some of the encounters leading up to that point do have some similarities, each boss will toss in something unique to set it apart from the last. Destroying each base at the end of the first six stages also has some spectacular fireworks as you fly away victorious. Sound wise, Soul Cresta is crushing it with a soundtrack from Yuzo Kashiro. The tunes pump throughout the game's 7th stage foray and it is chock full of grooves. Composed with inspiration from Terra Cresta, Kashiro uses the Yamaha 
AM3812 to lay down an FM soundtrack that, in short, absolutely bangs. It's also rad to hear Kashiro compose a shoot-em-up soundtrack, as for someone as pedigreed as himself, it's no surprise that the tunes are infectiously catchy. Sound effects work also follows suit with some great audio cues and feedback with its retro aesthetic. You get a mix of original Cresta games with new sound bites along the journey, and between the various firing modes and formations, each have unique sounds which is sick. Getting upgrades and bonus points also have a plucky chime that when it hits in such a way that it's oddly satisfying. Shot feedback and explosions are top notch with some varying degrees of boom, with the bigger bangs being just as colossal to hear as they are to watch. The sounds of the environment like falling boulders and raising tectonic pillars all have some proper effects work that audibly crush at times. Each fire mode and special attack has its own unique audio cue and these are pretty punchy as well alongside the carnage that you'll hear during the journey. It took a little while to circle back to Soul Cresta, but it was certainly worth the wait and is a fun vertical shooter to learn and play. Being the first entry of Platinum Games Neo Classic Arcade series shows a lot of potential for future games, and with the parties involved currently, has the ingredients for some great retro-inspired games or continuations of long-running series like this swan song for the Cresta franchise. For newer shoot 'em up games available on modern consoles, this is a good one to try since it has a lot that new and veteran audience can appreciate. From the art to the music, Soul Cresta is a rad and challenging shooter that many can get immersed in if you're willing to learn how the mechanics work beyond shooting and dodging. The formation attacks and special moves are something to ensure survival, but you'll need to know how and when to use them effectively. Each difficulty adds a reasonable challenge, even on easy, and once you tap into those higher settings, hopefully you are paying attention since you'll need all of those skills and tricks dialed. Gameplay never really gets to the point of frustration for those casual runs despite the difficulty ramps, but and going for those one coin clears is very much possible, but will require some practice. Soul Cresta gets an 8 out of 10 and comes recommended to shoot 'em up fans and fans of retro style arcade games. For the fifth and said to be final entry of the series, it retains the gameplay of the past while adding in some new tricks for modern experiences. Plus, it's always sick to hear Yuzu Kashiro tracks and shoot 'em up since it is fitting to his style. You also get a well rounded game with a fair challenge and a lot to learn with its addictive gameplay. If you're interested in games like this, it's available on the Nintendo Switch, PS4, and PC digitally, with physical copies released through Limited Run, which are around $30 to $50 at the time of this recording. I definitely want to go and check out the older entries again at some point and certainly plan on coming back to this to try to top that last high score, since once you got this dialed, you might not stop playing. And I thank you so much if you made it this far into the video, and if you find these videos helpful, that's awesome, I'm glad to use it as a resource. Check it back often, we'll have more reviews and commentaries come up in the near future. But until then, take it easy and stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one.